Hi everyone, it's me Taffy Thomas, the first laureate for storytelling here. For more than 400 years there's been a poet laureate, starting with Lord Byron. And then for 20 years there was a children's laureate, including Michael Rosen and Michael Mulpergo, whose books you probably all know. Twelve years ago they decided they needed a storyteller laureate because storytelling is important and I was honoured that they invited me to be the first laureate for storytelling. Now I said that storytelling is important. Well I suppose I should tell you why I think it's important. Storytelling preserves the past, reveals the present and with your help creates the future. Also, you can't write a story unless you can tell a story. And you can't tell a story unless you've heard a story. And stories have legs. Stories have legs because I walked over to sit down in this chair. 350 stories walked over with me. They were in my head. But some of those stories will walk with you into your classroom or when you go home to tell your family and your friends. I'm going to tell you a story now which has walked all the way here from China. It came from China as a story about a Mandarin, but because it's found a home in England, it's now a story about the mayor of a town. But you don't get the story unless you can solve a riddle. This is the riddle. I've got black eyes and golden hair and I grow towards my namesake, high in the air. What am I? Black eyes, golden hair, and I grow towards my namesake, high in the air. Well, the answer, of course, is a sunflower. So you know there's going to be a sunflower in this story. The mayor of the town was very old. Time was approaching when he would have to retire. But before he could retire, he had to choose a successor. Lots of people wanted that job because you got to wear a big gold chain and you got driven around in a big car and you got lots of free dinners. Everybody wanted to be the new mayor of the town. So how could he choose a successor? Well, the mayor went to ask the wisest person in the town who was actually a gardener, and he explained the problem to the gardener. And the gardener smiled, told the mayor to put his hand out, and in his hand he put a handful of sunflower seeds. And in, in the mayor's ear, he whispered a cunning plan. So the mayor went back to all the people who wanted his job. And he said, now all of you, line up, put your hands out. And each of their hands, he put one, two sunflower seeds. So now you find a big flower pot, fill it with soil. And you can, you can act this out, if you like, when you tell the story to your friends. And then you make, fill, fill it with soil, pat the soil down, make two holes. In each hole you drop a sunflower seed. Then you water the pot and push it out into the yard so it gets the sunshine and the rain. And you come back in a month and whoever has grown the biggest, the best sunflower will be my successor. Bit of a strange way of deciding really. Anyway, young Jack, who was eight years old, went home to his mum and he said, Mum, Mum, I need a big flower pot. And Jack's mother found him a huge brown flower pot. And Jack filled it with earth, with soil. Then he patted the soil down. Then he made two holes. One, two. In each hole he dropped a sunflower seed. Then he watered the pot, pushed it out into the yard to get the sunshine and the rain. Then Jack washed his hands and went to bed. It was only half past two in the afternoon, but that was enough work for one day. The next morning, Jack leapt out of bed, washed and dressed, and out to the yard, looking for those tell-tale green shoots. But nothing grew. All he had was a pot of dirt. And so it was every morning for a month. 
nothing grew. So at the end of the month, Jack's mother said, Jack, the month is up. Take the pot down to the mayor's house and see if you've won. Jack said, there's no point in me going. All I've got is a pot of dirt. And his mother, who was very wise, said, no, you've done your best. Take it. So Jack picked the pot up, it was so heavy it made his little knees bend, and he lugged it down to the mayor's house. When he got there, there was a big long queue of people, all holding pots, burgeoning with bright yellow sunflowers, sunflowers as big as a dinner plate. And on the end was Jack, with his pot of dirt and a tear trickling down his cheek. But the mayor looked along the line, he saw the big yellow flowers, then he saw Jack with a pot of dirt. And he turned to Jack and he said, you will be my successor. You will be the next mayor of this town. And Jack said, I don't understand. All of these people have got big yellow flowers and all I've got is a pot of dirt. And the mayor said, yes, but I gave you all the same seeds. And before I gave you those seeds, I boiled them so they could never grow. So you are the only one who has been honest. So you are the only one who is fit to be the mayor of this town. So that's the story of the pot of dirt or the sunflower. And this summer in your school park, perhaps by your storytelling chair, in a pot, if you plant a sunflower, it'll grow bigger than your teacher. And you can tell the story of the sunflower which has come all the way from China via me, Taffy Thomas, the storyteller, to you. Bebo Bendit, my story's ended. If you didn't like it, take it to Wales and buy some nails and mend it. But if you did like it, take the story and tell it to someone else. Because the stories only live by being told from one friend to another.